Hi, I'm Ruben Grandia, presenting the work Nonlinear Model Predictive Control for Robotic Systems with Control Layout and Functions. In this work, we explore a combination of two different approaches to the control of nonlinear systems. On the one hand, there is the Lyapunov based approach, where the focus is on guaranteeing stability for the full nonlinear system. While on the other side, we have nonlinear model predictive control, which achieves high performance through online optimization. We will start by looking at each of these approaches individually as a benchmark, and afterwards compare this to the combined formulations that we propose. We consider a nonlinear system in control fine form and look for a Lyapunov function with the usual properties. We call this a control Lyapunov function if for every state we can find an input that results in sufficient decrease of the Lyapunov function. This allows us to formulate the CLFQP controller, which selects an input based on some costs and subject to the stabilizing constraint. We pick a velocity profile and ask the CLFQP controller to track this reference while minimizing the input norm. As shown in the video, the Segway takes a rather aggressive dive every time the reference changes. This happens because the formulated QP only optimizes pointwise in time, but it doesn't consider future costs. This is in direct contrast with nonlinear model predictive control, where we use the model of the system to consider costs of future states and input along a certain horizon. The finite dimensional problem is created through direct multiple shooting, resulting in a nonlinear optimization problem. We solve this optimization problem through sequential quadratic programming, where each time a new state is received, we solve a single iteration with the linear quadratic approximation made around the previous solution and apply the first input. As a baseline, we create a typical MPC formulation with a tracking cost, an input cost along the horizon, and a terminal cost where the relative weight is to be tuned. We see that on the left, where beta equals 1, the controller fails to stabilize the system. But on the right, with beta equals 10, the controller performs really well. So, good performance is certainly possible with this formulation, but it's rather up to the user to find a suitable cost function. This now motivates our combined approach, where we seek to take the formal stability guarantees coming from the control Lyapunov function and add them to the optimization. As a first idea, one could take the CLFQP formulation and instead of minimizing the input at a certain instant, penalize it along the entire horizon. The same stabilizing constraint that was present in the CLFQP appears here on the first segment on the MPC. Unfortunately, what this results in after solving the problem is that the first input is the same as for the CLFQP and the inputs for the rest of the horizon are trivially set to zero. Indeed, there is nothing in this formulation that motivates the MPC to stabilize the trajectory beyond the first segment. So we need to somehow add the notion of stability to the tail of the horizon, and this leads us to the first combined approach where we take the constraint on the layout of derivative and apply it along the entire horizon. However, there's another way to do it. If we step back and look at the derivative constraint, we can derive an upper bound on the Lyapunov function over time that holds for any trajectory. This means that after a certain time t, we know that the state must be within a particular level set. This can be exploited to constrain the tail of the MPC formulation. Since we know the horizon length, we can use the derived Lyapunov level set as a terminal constraint. Moreover, we can consider not only constraining the final state, but to constrain each of the intermediate states as well, resulting in this contracting funnel along the horizon. We took all these three presented formulations and tested them with again the same reference trajectory. All formulations successfully stabilize the system. Looking at all experiments together, we see that the combined CLF and MPC approaches outperform the CLF QP. And compared to the MPC only formulations, there is no need for additional cost tuning to obtain a stabilizing controller. We did similar experiments and simulations where we additionally vary the horizon length and we observe similar trends here. The CLF based controllers are stabilizing for any horizon length, no tuning required. The addition of the prediction horizon creates a performance benefit compared to the CLFQP, and compared to the MPC only approach, we avoid the risk that a bad tuning or the cost makes the controller unstable. And finally, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first time that such a combined approach was demonstrated on hardware. With this, we would like to thank our funding resources, and I thank Professor Ames and everyone at the Ember Lab for hosting me during this collaboration.